who joined a race against the clock to vaccinate the world against the coronavirus. If any one country thinks after vaccinating its population they are safe, it is a lie. This is all that's left. If countries doesn't start sharing the excess supplies that they have available, the pandemic will continue. Each dose critical to help stop the worldwide spread of the virus and its variants. We're already behind. We live in a global world. It takes a few hours to reach to the United States. It takes a few hours to reach to China. So the virus will continue to move. We are only safe if all of us are safe. And if any one country thinks after vaccinating its population they are safe, it is a lie. That's where COVAX comes in, an international consortium including the World Health Organization and UNICEF. Their goal, distribute two billion vaccines by the end of this year. But they face major challenges. Many wealthy countries have procured not only enough vaccine to vaccinate their entire populations, but to vaccinate their entire populations many times over. That is painful, very painful. Every human life matters. It is not about nations, it is not about countries. This pandemic has affected the entire globe. Many countries still haven't administered a single dose, in part because many wealthy countries are hoarding. We are not getting vaccines as quickly as we should. We are not responding to this pandemic at the speed at which we should. We have to hold hands together if we are going to win this war. The logistics to fight that war are directed from here in Copenhagen, where Eva Kadili and her team are spearheading the largest logistical effort in history. The delivery of those 2 billion doses of COVID-19 vaccine and syringes to over 190 countries. We are at the high bay here where we have, uh, it's 20,000 square meters and it is fully automated. Uh, this high bay can store up to 36, 37,000 uh, pallets. The challenge, of course, uh, is uh, trying to get access. This is what keeps me awake at night. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, we can increase access to vaccines as soon as possible. I want to make sure that our health workers, teachers, social workers uh, are reached. This is really unprecedented in terms of scale, but also speed. What matters today in terms of COVAX is speed. We are working 24 hours around the clock and it's all about our personal commitment, our personal feeling accountable, feeling responsible that uh, people are waiting there for us to deliver vaccines. If countries doesn't start sharing the excess supplies that they have available, the pandemic will continue. And not only will continue, but we'll see new variants. So it is uh, very important that we do that now, today. Because of the dynamic nature of the everything, there was no sleeping virtually working almost 24 hours. Before you sleep, the calls come in, the WhatsApp messages, and, and so many things. But finally, it, it, all of a sudden, we got a message that, you know what, Uganda can receive vaccines. In March 2021, 864,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccine arrived in Kampala, Uganda. That's where we joined the COVAX team task at hand, vaccinate the country's healthcare workers, no matter how far away. This is the beginning of the last mile for a small but critical batch of COVID-19 vaccines. Good morning. We're in the middle of Lake Victoria. And here in Uganda, we're headed out to the islands where the vaccine is going to be distributed. After a nearly two-hour ride, we arrive at the Pavuma Islands, a chain of 52 isolated islands home to over 130,000 people. A 
Are you excited? The vaccines have arrived. Yeah, the vaccines have already come. Have you gotten your shot yet? So for me, I'm going to be vaccinated when you are there. Is this a happy day? Yeah, it's a happy day today. Those are four vials. Each vial contains 10 doses. So we are taking 40. Then he puts the four ice packs. He puts it in there. And then it is ready to go. We can put here, in this one. Okay, let's okay. go. The last mile requires one last boat. <laughs> <laughs> Getting this vaccine this far has not been easy. Yes. But precious cargo. How do you feel right now? I one feels very good because at least there will be some protection. It's wonderful to have this, and yet it's much smaller amount than you'd hoped. Those 864,000 doses are enough to inoculate 425,000 people, just under 1% of the population. This day, we're carrying only 40 precious doses. For over 100,000 people, there are about 200 healthcare workers on these islands. Oh, even more. So, is that enough? No, it's not enough, of course. Here we are. Oh, there we go. Hello. I call upon all the people of Obuma to be vaccinated against COVID-19. This vaccine is safe. It will be of much benefit to us and um, the rest of the community we serve. After two days on the Bavuma Islands, we traveled to another hard to reach corner of Uganda. Right on the border with South Sudan is Bidi Bidi, the largest refugee settlement in the country. They've received enough vaccines for 5,000 people. I mean, there are men with guns outside this place. You're making sure no one gets these. We have security 24 hours. We want to be sure that nothing happens with the vaccines. You treat this like gold. Yes, we, we, this is gold to us. May I see? Yeah, yeah, it's very important. So we can move and see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is yeah, so this is, uh, yeah, you can open how many ice packs? Oh, wow, yeah. there's the so ice packs. Quite a number of them can fit in there. Yeah? Yeah. Refugees have been welcomed to this area. Mm. And part of that, you think, is because the host population receives the same services as the mm. refugee population. Yes. Actually, we have an open door policy, and the fact that that policy is so open and uh, we don't put people in camps, we put in the settlement, means that they stay with the host population. They access the same services, they go in the same facilities, get the same level of care, they go to the same schools. That's the beauty of uh, refugee management in Uganda. Was there any debate within the government about vaccinating refugees when their turn comes? The government of Uganda policy on refugees is very clear. They are part of us, they are part of the population, and we treat them just like we treat every other Ugandan. When we distribute vaccines, we also distribute them to where the refugees are. So they are getting the same vaccines that we are getting at the same time that we are getting it. Orphaned as teenagers during South Sudan's bloody civil war, these refugees walked for weeks to get here. Now they're healthcare workers about to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. So you've all had the vaccine now. How do you feel? Were you a little bit nervous about coming today to get the vaccine? No. Some healthcare workers have been reluctant to come forward because of things on the internet Did that trouble you. No. First, it troubled us. For instance, it disturbed me a lot, but I felt. And the fact that you are refugees and healthcare workers, when it comes to these COVID vaccines, do you feel you're being treated equally? Yeah, treated equally. The vaccine Ugandan are receiving is the same vaccine refugees from South Sudan are receiving. After the healthcare workers, teachers are next in line. I know something that UNICEF cares deeply about is education and less than 1% of kids have been in school this year because of COVID, which is why teachers are high on the priority list for getting the vaccines. The priority is getting the vaccine so our schools can reopen again and then the children can go back to school. But Uganda still needs millions of doses to meet its goal of vaccinating 50% of the population. 
I'm interested that you picked 50% of the population because in the U.S. they're telling us that until 90% of the population is inoculated, there's no herd immunity. Do you think 50% is actually enough? As you are aware, the majority of the Ugandan population is young. The majority are below 18 years. It's and so, extraordinary. Yes. So we are focusing on the population 18 years and above. And that population is about 22 million people. That means half of the population will get vaccinated. But as soon as information comes in regarding the younger age group, then we will also plan for them and take action accordingly. Getting the vaccine around this beautiful country is not easy. We went out to the Bavuma Islands with 40 doses. I mean, those 40 doses matter. And yet getting there took two boats, long drives. Do you have any idea how much it's actually going to cost to distribute the vaccine? To tell you the truth, it would have been much cheaper. If we got all the doses at once, it would have been cheaper. Getting it in bits will make the entire program extremely expensive. It costs about $3 to vaccinate a person. And we are looking at vaccinating over 22 million people, including the refugees. And worry about how to pay for it later? Exactly. At a secure location in the country's capital, this is the nation's vaccine stockpile. All the COVID vaccine not yet distributed. So you are at the national medical stores. Uh, this is the central vaccine store for Uganda. This is where uh, we do all the packing for the vaccines before they are dispatched to all the districts. For people who aren't familiar, these are big refrigerators. Yes, very big massive. And how, how cold do you have to keep the COVID vaccine? Um, in this section of the of the cold store, all the cold rooms actually are maintained at temperatures of two to eight degrees Celsius. The room was full when we received the first okay. assignment. Now we have a few doses left, but most of the vaccines have been dispatched. This is all that's left. There is simply not enough vaccine available. Dr. Eva's work is far from over, but she remains optimistic. You said something to me. As we were soaked, drenched on the boat, water splashing in your face and mine, you said we're delivering hope. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, it is some hope. As, as we continue vaccinating, there's a hope that, that the, the pandemic can be brought under control.